Hi guys, I'm Sarah Hall, and today we're going to have a part two to our discussion on non-judgment. If you want to watch the first video, I have the link right here. And I received several requests from you guys to do a follow-up on that discussion, so here we are. Today we're going to talk about some tips for practicing non-judgment in everyday life. Releasing negative judgments towards others from your thought patterns is incredibly helpful in bringing about inner peace and higher perspective on life's situations. Know that when we discuss non-judgment, there is a difference between using the spiritual practice of non-judgment to help you better attain a state of acceptance, peace, and higher perspective in life than necessarily abandoning your cognitive reasoning and trying to live life with no sense of discerning one thing from another. This particular point is actually one that can cause some confusion for people, so that I thought that it was worth mentioning today. Using discernment through your life experiences is natural, functional, and an indelible part of the evolution of your consciousness. One of the very reasons for which we incarnate into this world of duality, in which we experience so much variety in the forms creation can take, is for the sake of expanding consciousness. This expansion and evolution of consciousness is a collective journey for the human race towards an enlightened state of oneness. Now, if you saw my video on non-attachment, which you can check out here, you may recall that we discussed the idea of oneness. You see, we all originate from perfect oneness. In fact, there is a part of you that even now remains in that state of absolute oneness with the universe and is integrated with the source of all consciousness, with the mind of the all or God, if you will. It is said in the Course in Miracles that we are at home in God, dreaming of exile. In other words, our separateness is merely an illusion. And the process of waking up from that illusion will cause us to return to oneness with an enlightened perspective of it that understands what oneness is because we have experienced its opposite. One of the great functions of a physical lifetime on planet Earth is all the contrast that we get to experience. That contrast is constantly causing us to evolve in our desires. And every desire we have is in truth a desire for God, a desire to return to the infinite love and oneness of our source. Our desires are our way of reaching towards knowing and touching God. This catalyzes immense growth, evolution, and expansion in our consciousness. And it is a product of discerning between contrasting experiences. So yes, discernment is a good thing, and it helps us to learn how to steer our lives in the direction of love and unity. Let's distinguish then between discernment and judgment wherein we can identify judgment as the act of attaching a belief or preference to our sense of identity in such a way that potentially limits our perspective. Yes, use your discernment to help you to decide which life experiences are good for you, but once you have set upon your course, there is no need to attach these things to your ego. Rather, it is greatly empowering to simply return to impartial, unattached, allowing as the forces of life just move through and past you. Why? Because in this state, you have the power to access the divine self. It is in a state of stillness, 
unhindered by ego-based attachments and distractions that you are able to glimpse and know the presence of God within you. And that presence has the power to overcome all obstacles, to access all the understanding that you will ever need, and to create without limitation. So as you practice meditation, gently moving towards a state of total non-judgment and non-attachment to literally all forms of thought is empowering and healing. When you're in the middle of a life decision, use your discernment to steer your course. And then practice simply allowing life to unfold without the need for the ego to attach, control, or push or resist in the situation. So with that said, here are my tips for practicing non-judgment in your everyday life. Number one, become aware of judgment towards others. While it can be healthy and useful to discern the best way to relate to another person, including what kind of boundaries or communication might best serve the interaction, it is not healthy to attach negative personal judgments onto your relationship with them. So when you notice that your ego is feeling triggered by something that another person does or says, rather than attach resentment to that person, simply take a moment to breathe and observe the feelings that you are having. When you are observing that you are angry, annoyed, or offended, for example, you are not necessarily identified with being angry, annoyed, or offended. Furthermore, you are not repressing your feelings, but giving your emotional self space and validation through the experience without letting yourself enter a downward spiral of negative thinking. As you observe the feeling without attaching to it, the feeling will eventually dissipate just like a cloud of smoke. And this is very healthy because when we attach personally to negative feelings and bring them into our identity, we are drawing what we do not want closer to us. We are essentially attaching and resonating with what we do not like. To observe and release such feelings without attaching to them keeps you free and open to happiness and well-being. My second tip, seek understanding. Once you have calmed the urge to judge, reminding yourself that there is always a different perspective available to you that includes a deeper understanding of the other person or situation. Seeking to understand the circumstances that have brought about what you are feeling or experiencing from all perspectives, yourself and others included, allows for greater compassion and higher knowledge. Compassion and knowledge open the doors to finding peaceful resolutions that benefit everyone involved. Number three, replace negative judgments with prayer. When you find yourself judging someone or something, set a positive intention through prayer. This opens the door for forgiveness, for love and understanding to enter your heart. Even when it is difficult for us to detach personally from our difficult feelings towards another, we can always invite heaven in through prayer. Ask the angels to surround the relationship or situation with healing light. Pray for higher understanding, compassion, and a resolution to any drama or imbalance. Spend just one moment reaching towards the higher understanding that forgiveness gives us, and you will see that all situations contain something for which to be grateful. There is always room to thank even the most difficult situations because every interaction that we experience holds the opportunity to learn, grow, 
and deepen our compassion for both ourselves and for others. Number four, use your discernment to create healthy boundaries. When we find our ego triggered with painful thoughts or emotions, it's sometimes helpful for us to create healthy space and boundaries around that situation. For example, if you find yourself in the presence of someone who behaves in an abusive manner, it is usually going to be best for your health and peace of mind to assert a boundary or to walk away from the situation. If your priority is to release the ego's hold of judgment and negativity on you, then maintaining healthy space from overtly toxic situations can support this goal and allow room for you to heal. We're co-creating our best life. Now, this certainly does not mean that we need to run away from every little thing that causes us slight discomfort. But creating a balanced life can support your ability to love and serve to your highest potential. Number five, become aware of repeating thought patterns and mood swings. So if you notice that a judgmental mentality tends to arrive habitually in response to certain environments or life situations, This can be a helpful indication of where you can begin to heal self-limiting patterns. Oftentimes, without realizing it, we can slip into a negative mood as a result of deeply ingrained limiting beliefs that have developed from habitual judgments. So when you notice moodiness like this setting in, stop, take a step back, breathe, and just observe. Ask yourself how you got into this mood. As you explore and retrace your thoughts, you might notice that your moodiness is a result of a deeply ingrained judgment from the past that has become part of your belief system. Once you have identified the belief at the source of your negative thought pattern, go ahead and release it. Bring that belief forward, perhaps even envisioning that you are holding it outside of you in your hands right before you. Take in a deep healing breath. And as you exhale, visualize the belief dissolving into pure light. Then affirm, I choose to release this belief now. I open my mind and heart to understanding the highest truth. I forgive and release the past and welcome love and unlimited understanding into my consciousness now. Number six, look for blessings. When you are working to clear your mind from a judgmental state, it can be helpful to shift from a potentially negative outlook to a positive one by looking for things to enjoy. Slow down, breathe, and release attachment to the judgments the ego wants to keep focusing on. Enter the majesty of the present moment. Open your mind wide and observe all of the beauty in the present. Let everything in and simply allow reality to be. You have the ability to notice beauty, joy, and goodness in literally every situation. Perhaps you will even begin to feel calm and grateful for what you notice in the present. Your happiness and peace of mind are important. One could even say that they are paramount to your purpose for living. Non-judgment is a powerful key to claiming and cultivating the happiness for which you were created. And your happiness enables you to spread heaven on earth. So thank you so much for watching. Do hit the thumbs up button to let me know if you enjoyed our discussion today and join the family by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell below. Do keep in touch with me on social media, all of the links for which you will find in the description below. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can visit my website, sarahhall.com. I love you and I thank you for watching today. Know that until we meet again, you are so loved, 
I'm so very blessed. Bye!